kind of more grip, less friction. It sounds slightly contrary, but so if we're um, if we're looking for more grip, you know, why are we looking for more grip? Well, specifically when it comes to sheets, main sheets, kite sheets, you know, we're looking for more grip to give us better control. I think it's fair to say, you know, in in skiff type boats and on on any main sheet, you don't want a slippery main sheet that you can't get a hold of, but you also want something that's going to be kind of smooth in the hand and give you a really good ease. And obviously, kind of downwind with a big asymmetric sheet's pretty important to you there, Saskia? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I crew on the 49er FX, um, so I'm pretty much with the sheets all day. And yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's really important for me to have the right sheet for when the kite's pretty loaded. You know, I'm not kind of relying on my grip strength the whole time um, on a three day or a three race day, really. Um, but the ba that, that like perfect balance between getting enough grip in the sheet that you know yeah you you're not, you're not having you know crampy hands downwind yeah, but totally. also it's smooth and it runs nicely through the system yeah so yeah sheets is pretty important but also you know when we're talking about grip that also refers to to cleats and to outhauls and all those systems where we need uh, you know we're spending a lot of money on sales and we want to buy fast sales but also we've got to keep that shape that we're paying for. So that outhaul does not want to slip. Halyards, total pain when they don't, when they don't stay where you put them either. So it's really important that, that your covers on your rope are actually doing the job and they interact well with the hardware that you're using. And you, you can match those up quite specifically. Um, obviously with grip, we're looking for, you know, when we're hoisting a kite or an asymmetric, you want a lot of grip in the hands. You want to be able to get hold of it and get that sail to move quite quickly. Um, and obviously positive, hold in jammers etc we've talked about so there's a couple of different ways that you can find grip and this is what we're going to cover in the first half and then the second half we'll talk about you know where we can reduce friction and how we can achieve that so you can go to a much grippier cover on a rope so the eight plat covers have been around since eight plat pre-stretch was on lasers in the late 60s you know that that cover's been around a long time but this cover's great because it'll sit really well in a clam cleat uh, or a jammer and it will not move, especially if you put Technora into the cover, which is also very grippy when it's wet and it bites really hard. So you can see that all of these lumps will fit really nicely into a, into a cleat, but also into a ratchet. So we tend to use, uh, this is R8 specifically, we tend to use it at 8 mil and 7 mil on main sheets for etchels or on the skiffs. Um, you guys, are you using the 7 mil? You use that line on your kite at the moment. So you're still using that on the main, or are you still on the matrix? Cool, on the fusion. So yeah, the cover is a way to go. Obviously, you can go to a 16 plat, and then once you get past 16 plat into 24, it's really smooth. So if you're looking for grip, uh, eight plat is the way to go. The reason people are looking for grip in some other systems, certainly like the Nacro, is the Technora actually grabs, it's very grippy when it's wet, and it'll grab these plastic systems. You can see there's R8 in this paddle wheel, um, but across the NACRA, pretty much everything is Technora. Not so much, well, for the grip, but also because of the high loads and the wear and tear. Um, you need repeatability, and that helps. Um, sort of polyester versus these Technora blends. Guys, can you drop the video in for me there? I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a, a video of, um, some polyester covers and some Technora and some PBO, just so you can see actually, well, what, what does a Technora cover do on a piece of rope? Okay, so this is a piece of polyester cover, and I'm just touching this with my hot knife at 200 degrees, and you can see that that pretty much melts on contact. On the Technora and polyester mix, which is kind of our work coil score on pre-rope, you can see the resilience of that cover. And then PBO is a fiber that we mainly see in um, kind of runner tails on TP52s and on really big race boats. Uh, it's incredibly expensive. Uh, it has some really unique properties, but you can see the heat on this has absolutely no effect at all. We don't tend to use PBO in the dinghy market simply because it is totally UV unstable and it starts to fall apart pretty much straight away. Uh, it's in, an incredible property, but for dinghy sailing, it's not really appropriate. So the other place that, that people are looking for grip is in hardware as well, certainly on main sheets. So in the last couple of years, we've seen these uh, evolutions of blocks for ratchets. Um, what are you guys using? You're using, yeah, we currently use them, using yeah. slightly softer. Uh, I use them on my spinnaker blocks, which cool. work really well, yeah. 
And you can, you can match these blocks with, with that eight plat grippy cover that we looked at earlier. If you're using sort of a, an alloy base sheave with lots of teeth in it, then you want to go for a really smooth 24 plat cover on a piece of rope. You don't want to put a grippy rope in a very grippy ratchet like that because the two will just destroy each other and the rope will lose quite quickly. Um, so that's the other place that people are looking for grip. We're seeing a lot of those blocks on the NACRA and a lot of these sort of blocks through, through all of the Olympic classes, but kind of fireballs, I'm seeing them across the board really. I don't know what you guys are seeing out on the circuit. Um, so we use the slightly softer uh, blocks so that in the light uh, with a grippy rope so that in the light winds you have quite a lot of feel. Um, still you can feel like every little gust and lull when there's not a lot of sheet tension. Um, but then by marrying that up with the really grippy rope when it then gets windy and there's a lot of load in the sheet, you know, it's not going to blow Sass's grip strength up really, really quickly. Um, so yeah, for us that's been a real, that's a, the, a way better combo for us. But pretty much everybody in, in, in the top fleets has, has moved to yeah, one of these options. Um, mostly, I think some people use the more grippy ones for the main sheet block just because there's a lot of, like it's a, in main sheet squeezing conditions there's a lot of load in it. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, we use the slightly yeah. lighter ones. Yeah, and we see these a lot on the NACRA as well on the, on the yeah. kite, kite sheets. So, so we've kind of talked a little bit about, about grip there and how we achieve it. The, the next bit I'm going to talk about is, is friction and how we reduce that and how we make things slippier and quicker. Because, you know, if we're, if we're looking for the advantages of less friction in the system, obviously kite hoists, anything fast moving, um, the less cover you have on a rope. And if you're just running pure Dyneema, which is incredibly slippery, you're going to get a faster hoist, but also you're going to get a faster drop. Because yesterday we were talking about what a slow drop might mean to these guys. I don't know if you'll recount that for me, but, but what, what, what does a slow drop around a Lua Mark and an FX involve if, you, if it gets pretty sticky and draggy? Yeah, well, classic skiff racing, um, you know, once you get to marks, it can get a bit chaotic. So for us, just the smooth getting kites up and down is just really critical. Um, you know, you could, you could lose five or ten places at a lured mark easily if you have a you know, a mistake with a kite drop, so. Yeah, those kind of compressed situations is where all that boat handling and, and kind of the performance of the product will really, really get you out of trouble yeah. or, or benefit from somebody else's issues. So, yeah. so the other place that um, kind of tapering sheets and just having Dyneema out to the end of the sail is, I okay, most people talk about it as a positive feel and we, we struggle to define it, we all do. But you know, why do you guys taper stuff out? So when we talk about tapering, just for anyone in the audience, we're talking about going from grip to frictionless uh, Dyneema in the system. So that's what we're talking about. Um, so a, a good one example for us is on our jib sheets. Um, there's a lot, when it's windy, there's a lot of load in our jib sheet. Um, but to be able to play it well upwind and kind of keep the boat going and not let the main rag too much, uh, you have to be able to get it out the cleat really easily and pop it straight back on again. So we end up with a, we've got a five mil, uh, five mil XL, I think, uh, as the going through the cleat. So then it pops in and out of the cleat really, really nicely and really smoothly. Um, but then we've tapered that into some two mil, um, which then then runs through the system really, really nicely. Um, so that kind of gives us the best of both worlds, really. Um, the other one is just tapering, like uh, going to like the lightest rope you can find. So a good example for that for us was last year, some of our trouser gases were in quite light wind venues and we were on a diet. So if we were on a diet, the boat needs to go on a diet as well. So we basically swapped out all of, basically everything we could think of and the, run the thinnest rope we could find um, or get away with. So we would, we put kite line on as the tails of all of our halyards because um, once wet, they weigh so much less than the Dyneema. Um, yeah, so basically anything we could try to do uh, to try to put the boat on a diet, we basically did. And it's incredible actually how thin a piece of rope you can. Yeah. It, looks, it looks wrong, but um, it's amazing how thin a piece of rope actually is completely um, does the job. Like in our main sheet bridal system, which has got a lot of load, um, we run kite line there as well. Um, in fact, actually, I'd say kite line is probably the most used piece of rope. Actually, yeah. it's really um, interesting because we rope. developed the kite line obviously for, for for kite surfing. But what we've seen is that product more and more all the way down into the dinghy market. So you know, the kite line starts at 1.3 mil, 
and 1.5 and 1.8 and we see that pretty much across the board on all the dinghies. We probably sell more of it to the dinghy market than we do for the kite surfing market. Um, and also now the sail makers use it in tapes of spinnakers and asymmetrics. Mm -hmm. I think even now we make a 0.9 mil whipping twine, which a lot of people are lashing blocks on because every single stainless fitting you can get off the boat. You, know, you can just walk around the boat with a bucket, put stainless fittings in and just swap that to lashings. You kind of reduce the weight, but also you can swap those things out because you can see the wear and tear on a lashing and you can change it because it's really inexpensive. Uh, and you just end up with a, you know, a bucket full of stainless and if you weigh it, that's more weight off the boat. And that's what these guys are looking to achieve, just get everything off. Um, so the other place that, that um, you know, we were talking about that smoothness of condition, certainly when the breeze is light, that ability to change a sail shape you know, is, is critical. And having systems that are stiff and sticky and don't flow you know, you're always seeing people smack in their mane to get their outhaul to go out. You know, all the oppies have that really awkward system in the back with no blocks that's really sticky. You know, if you can taper your sheets out, just have Dyneema in the system, then when you go for a little, you know, a little ease or adjustment when it's light, it doesn't need a full body movement to get that to happen. You can just get your systems to work. So anywhere you can strip to just Dyneema is, is a real benefit. But also, as the girls are talking about, you can you can come down in diameters. We're all using four mil diameter to sail, you know, dinghies. And four mil, four mil and three mil Dyneema is, is, is incredibly strong. You're never gonna break it. So you could probably come down to two mil or two and a half mil. But it, I think it's a bit of a perception thing. You know, I certainly I was working with the 2.4 guys and we were looking at how we were gonna re-rig the new 2.4 and everything on that boat was three and four mil Dyneema. And really I was like, well, actually, can we just put it all on 1.8? And they were like, oh, it looks too small. It's, it's a bit of a perception. You're never going to break it. There's, there's incredible load advantages, but everybody could come down significantly in their line size. And also, you're going to save yourself money because the less diameter, the, the, the cheaper the rope's going to be as well. So it's all about, unfortunately, tr just trying to make it comfortable to adjust. But if you taper things out, you know, because you can, you can taper four mil all the way down like this um, and make it a little bit easier to handle. And then you can always put kite line into the system and splice it in. So whilst we're talking about less friction, some, some other things just to put forward. So block size is really critical when you're talking about friction. We're all very tempted to buy the smallest block possible because it is heavy, but also because obviously it's less expensive to buy a smaller block. It's very tempting to go that way. Um, but a, you know, a sheave in a block needs to be 10% bigger than the rope that's running in it. If the, ro if the rope is touching either side of the sheath, you're just generating an awful lot of friction. Um, so it's really beneficial just to go up block sizes or use low friction rings and, and actually just take all of that friction out and don't be tempted into small block sizes. I don't know if you guys have, because you've gone really small on a lot of things, but then you've got a kite line and that's allowed you to do that. So. Yeah, so we, um, we've basically prioritized uh, what what systems have lots of load in them and which are the, the ones that they really need to have, like the blocks need to be working really well for you versus where there's not that much load in them and we can probably run a slightly, a block that's ideally, slight, ideally a bit smaller but we can get, you can get rid of the extra weight. So for instance on our biggest priority is the kite halyards. Um, so we've got a double block in the system and we have, uh, we've got an enormous block there. I think, yeah, we've got two 40 mil blocks there for, R8, so it's it's pretty, it's definitely pretty beefy for and massively over respect for for what we're the load that's on it, but it basically just helps the system it takes some of the load out of the system and helps that run really well. Whereas on um, some of our control lines, there's actually not that much load in it all the time, so we probably run essentially like slightly too small a block, but we've got seven or so like seven M. Um, double blocks so actually to, if we were to go up size on those that would be quite a large weight addition so it's probably just not really worth it for us so um we've tried to be smart with where we've gone perfect size of block versus perfect weight yeah. saving it's kind of trial and error to just wean, yeah. wean the weight down but 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 yeah. get the friction right and make yeah. it run the other place i certainly see uh, a lot of friction built is people running uh, returns and systems and then, and then chasing multiple lines through single items. Um, if you put two ropes through any one system, whether it's a low friction ring or anything else, you're gonna get a lot of friction between the two ropes as they touch all the way around, especially in sort of in a moth if you run it around the tramps. If you run three or four lines in parallel and they're all through the same 
little piece of stainless as they corner, the friction is enormous. Um, it's, it's always tempting to run multiple lines through, through friction rings and run them together. Um, you might increase your, your kind of, it'll slow you down maybe by 25%. We've experimented it with it uh, out of foiling week. I had a couple of German guys who got really sticky systems and also they got this going on. So uh, this is XL control, so it's Technora on Technora. And the Technora is like sandpaper and when it touches itself, you get this very strange fraying. The polyester is the blue and the red and that's absolutely smooth. And the Technora has just pulled itself apart on each other. So when you run multiple Technora lines across, they, they, the abrasion is really significant, so your, your lines die quite quickly. But you'll increase your friction in the system by 25%. This German guy came bouncing off the water with a grin on his face. He was just like, wow, it's so easy. It's like, yeah, single systems, purchases all on their own. Don't double them up. Um, but as we use more Technora uh, in ropes, you will see wherever a Technora rope will touch another rope, uh, it's quite abrasive and it will chafe it and wear it. Um, so if you start to see that on your lines, then you need to, to look at how they're all set up. Um, and obviously you can see this is, these are, this is NACRA, uh, and obviously their main sheet system is uh, quite heavily loaded, but the guys really need grip, uh, but they're desperately stripping all of this out just to Dyneema and, and just uh, the, the positive cover where they need it. Uh, and then this is one of the Merlins. There's some really good examples of stuff to go and look at where stuff's been done really well at the show. So um, Synergy um, are running the, the new OK, and there's some, there's some awesome splicing on that boat and tapering, some really th interesting things to go and look at. The same, the, the Ovi's OK is also good to look at. The, the new B14 is propped up down the other end uh, with the class association. And equally, uh, Barnsley's done some amazing work there, and that boat looks, looks great, and the systems are really well thought out, really well tapered through. And there's some great lessons to sort of take away from there. Um, that's super. These guys aren't with us today because they can't get here. So um, have you guys got any questions that you want to ask myself or Saskia or Charlotte whilst we've got anybody here? No? Okay. Well, listen, we're going to float around. So if, you, if you've got any problems, come and find us. If you want to learn how to taper sheets out, it's probably a 15-minute splice. I've left little, uh, little bits of paper on all the tables so that you can just QR code that and it'll take you straight to a splicing demo of how to do a taper. And if you want someone to show you how to do it, come and see us on our stand uh, just by the main stage. And we're quite happy to go through it with you one-to-one -one and show you how to do it. It's a really nice piece of splicing to do and probably one of the easiest bits to do as well. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it.